Today we're making spring cottage decor. Keep watching! I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own DIYs. The first project will be a bird with cherry blossoms. I thrifted this little sign. It's actually, I think, supposed to be like a copper undertone with some tarnishing, but it's actually like some type of a plastic. It is old, but I could not read the writing on the back, so I'm not entirely sure where it came from. But I love the piece. We're going to need some baby wipes, a permanent marker of some sort, a variety of brushes, some paints, yellow, green, brown, white, and two shades of gray. We're also going to need some white wax or you can use clear. I'm going to take a regular chippy brush to clean off this little sign or this little hanging decor piece. There are pieces of little tiny pieces of dust and cobwebs all over the items that you get from the thrift store. You always want to clean it off and get every little piece of stuff off of there. After I brush mine down, I'm going to be wiping it off. I'm just using a baby wipe, but you can use antibacterial wipes or just a damp paper towel or rag if you would like to do that. It's important to do this because we're going to be painting it and once you start putting paint down over a dirty surface, it makes a big mess. So we're going to avoid that by doing it the right way. I'm just going to use a little bit of craft paper, tape it down on my table, and I'll be doing all of my paint mixing right here on this paper. I am going to take a flat brush and just start putting down the darkest of my gray paint. These are all just paints that, um, you know, you can get at Walmart. Nothing fancy about this. They're not chalk paints. I'm going to use just a plain, I think this is a chocolate brown, and every piece of the branch and the limbs is going to get brown, and also the center of those beautiful flowers. Then I'm going to mix a little bit of green with some jet black, just a drop of it in there. Mix it up really well. I love this process. This is going to make a beautiful dark green that I don't have. Kind of a cool tone. And I'm going to take a brush here and just paint over this. Believe me, I'm not going to make you watch every step of everything I paint in here. So just bear with me. It's worth it. So the leaves are all going to be painted the green color. I'm going to go with the white. And this is actually uh, called antique parchment. It's like a more of an ivory color or slightly off white. It's not that bright wicker white that I've used in some of my projects. And I am going to go over each of these petals. Now, I looked this up because at first I thought it was a dogwood, but no, dogwoods actually have four petals. They're not magnolias either. I found a picture that shows these as a white cherry blossom. So they do have white cherry blossoms. If you are doubting me, feel free to Google it because they most certainly do have white ones. Now I'm just going to add a little bit of the lighter green in there to add some accents to my leaves. You don't have to do that if that's not something you want to do. You'd be surprised what you can find in a thrift store. I hope that y'all have a de decent thrift store around you because you can save so much money and get pieces that are unique. You know, you don't have to have the same thing that everybody else has. You can kind of take something and make it your own. So I'm just going to use another clean chippy brush and just kind of offload some of that lighter gray so that I can hit the highlights on the feathers. So kind of on the crest of this bird and then on the tail and on the wings. I am going to call this a crested dove, which by the way, I did look up and there are crested doves. So we're going to make this a dove because I love, love, love doves. I'm going to add a little bit of the darker gray with a little bit of black and that's what I'm going to do his beak in. And I'm just trying to get the same colors as the color of the picture of the bird that I, that I found that matches this picture or this little design. So that's what I did. And his beak was kind of a black, um, almost black, like a really dark gray color. So that's the color I'm putting here. But you know, you could make this a cardinal. You could do anything you wanted to. That's the great thing about painting over pieces. You can use your imagination and make it anything you want. You can make it a fantasy bird if you wanted to and just color it any way you want. 
So I'm taking this sunflower yellow and just mixing in a tiny bit of black just to dull it down to do the eye because the eye is actually that color and I used my pen to make the dot in the middle of the eye. Then I'm going to use some of that gold, the same mixture I used in the eyes, and I'm going to put it on a tiny little stipple brush and then just kind of pounce that over the brown. I don't want to com completely cover it. I want the depth in there, so that's how that's going to look. Then you can use clear wax. That's actually what I meant to grab, but I got the white wax instead, but it's okay. Um, the finish is okay. I liked it better with the darker color and the white wax is going to lighten it up a bit, but it's certainly okay and I do still like the piece, but I think a clear wax would have been better in this situation. I didn't want to use a dark wax. I do know that. This is spring, so I want to keep it light. So I'm just putting the wax on and then I'm going to let it sit for just a second, a couple of seconds, and then I'm going to get my dry towel and I'm just going to begin to wipe off some of that wax. I'm just wiping it back. Um, you can actually see through the paint, some of the places the paint actually lifts away and shows the that brassy looking coppery color that's underneath, which I'm totally fine with because I think it does give it a more of an aged look and it looks like this piece was meant to be painted this way rather than the flowers and everything being the exact same finish. And I like the way that um, it ends up looking but you know do your own thing here I do go back after I completely get this finished and wipe it all down and just take a little bit of yellow and go back over the center of the flowers because I really wanted that to pop and you'll see that in the end screen as well as the rest of the projects in the end screen And so this is how it looks and this is of course before I put the yellow in the center but I think this is much better and I think this looks much more cottagey springy what do you think you can watch my videos on Mondays and Thursdays at 5 p.m. the next project is going to be a woodland lantern now all of these projects are a little bit different but they're all different types of cottage so these are some things that I foraged for in my yard. Looks like a tiny little piece of a nest. We've got some turkey tail mushroom and some other types of fungus. I've got a little um, wreath form here, a little tiny wreath form. And then I've got some thrifted flowers, a little thrifted candle. And of course the lantern is thrifted. And here is some dark gray uh, paint, same as we used before. And this beautiful little lantern. Now, if you can't find a lantern like this, that is not a big deal. You can get a lantern at Dollar Tree and probably do the same thing. Process may be different, but you can get take the inspiration and do what you can with it. So clean it all up, and this has been cleaned up. I'm just gonna slide the glass part off. You can see that this is metal. Love the color of the finish, but I don't like the color of the oh, mirror light candle. So we're gonna change that up and make it match a little bit better. I'm just going to take that paint and I'm going to put it on, um, at first I grabbed just a wet wipe that was dried out and I'm just going to kind of pounce it up and down to just give it like a something to grip the final coat to. So we're going to take all the shine down as much as you can and also on the top, but don't get it on the candle wick. You could always tape that off if you're not sure of, um, you know, your space there. If you keep bumping your candle, just go ahead and tape it off. Then I'm going to take a little pouncer and I'm just going to go up and down with this. It's a little sponge brush. I don't know if you can get these at Dollar Tree or not, but it's worth trying and they're very cheap if you have to get them at Hobby Lobby or someplace like that. So you see the difference here. Much better. Now with these thrifted pieces, I am just going to pull them off the stem and then I will be able to break them down into smaller sections. I'm going to grab through this green mossy looking stuff and I am going to protect my fingers, of course. And then I'll be laying this down on the wreath. I want to not put it in on the top, but kind of on the outside toward the top. Not on the inside though, because we want that space to remain. It's gonna go back in the lantern. So it needs to have room to go there. I've already tested it, it does fit. So as long as I keep that moss out of the way from the inside, everything will go back together perfectly. I am just really not that good with finger protectors. I use them 
I recommend that you use them. I don't want anybody getting burned. Not on my watch, people. Not on my watch. You gotta keep those crafty fingers healthy. But when you're using moss, it's very sheer and I don't wanna burn my fingers off. So yeah, we're gonna protect them. And then I'm just kind of trimming out where it's a little bit thicker. And now you see how this fits right back on top. Just fit that right back in there and it won't be in the way of the glass or anything. I'm gonna make sure that I put a little glue in there to tack it down, let it dry, and this is how it will look so far. I'll take those little floral picks and begin to kind of work with them. I just cut the little part where it attaches to the, the uh, wire off so that it doesn't look so fake. And I'm going to glue it a little bit to the wreath underneath. Once it is attached on the bottom, then I'll take the little floral piece or this little seated piece up to the top and just glue it right on the edge. Cut that little plastic part off again. We don't want to cheapen our look, right? And then we're going to add some glue to hold this down on the other side, just like we did the first side. You can put them on the back side of it too if you want, but I don't think that's necessary. I'm really just going for mainly decorating the front, but you will see I do put a lot of these turkey tails around into the back also. So I have a video where I'm walking around my yard checking stuff out and foraging, and I forged these little turkey tails, and they come in a huge variety of colors. I hope to get more so I can show you what they look like. These are kind of a bluish gray with a little bit of tan, but there are some gorgeous colors. We have to wait until it rains, and since it rained so much yesterday, I bet it's going to be they're going to be all over the place today and I cannot wait. I actually found a little puffball mushroom in the yard yesterday when I was walking to the lake and that's the first one I've seen so far this year so I'm excited. If you're going to use these pieces from outside be sure that you let them dry out so that they don't have any mold or anything in them and then give them a good shake to make sure any little dead critters or whatever comes out. I'm not scared of that kind of stuff. I mean, I am the kind of person who walks around barefoot and I will lay down in the grass. So I'm not afraid of dirt and minuscule germs. But if you are, that's okay. You know, you might want to bleach things or I don't even know how you would, the, the way that you would do that. I don't even like the idea of thinking of all those chemicals. Ew. So I'm going to take the, after I've got all my turkey tails down where I like them, I am going to put that little piece of nest or whatever that is down in the bottom and then put the candle on, slide the glass back over the top and it's just going to clamp on there. And I didn't glue the candle down, that way I can turn it on and turn it off with no problem. And it's not going to go anywhere. It's kind of wedged into the grass and the sides. You can see it didn't even fall when I almost dropped it. Can see that it how it is looking so far then you don't have to do anything to the top of your lantern if you don't want to but for me I think I want to add a little bit more so I'll take some of these full pieces here and I'm gonna put them right on the handle and this is me kind of trying to show you what I'm doing because I don't have the angle that can show you every step I take so I like to be able to pick up the project and kind of give you an idea what's going on from time to time so you can see what I'm doing but if you were doing your own project, you'd be standing above it or sitting above it or whatever anyway. So this is how we do it. Just tied it with a little bit of jute and again, cutting off those little cheapy ends. And then I'm going to hot glue it so it doesn't slide off or slip on that, that hanger. Get glue, spider webs all over my fingers. And I don't want any frays. Okay, so I like that. I've added a little bit of moss in the glue that was left there. And a little piece of turkey tail is going to be glued on there as well. I mean, this is going to be repeating the process all the way through, you know, seeing all the different little pieces that we put in it, replicating that. So a little bit of moss, a little bit of greenery. Then I'm going to add, I'm just going to cut this off so it's better scale and add it back in the middle of the greenery so it looks like a smaller piece. And that's how the lantern's gonna look. Y'all, today's video is in collaboration with Crafty K 
Kathy. She is a friend of mine who does YouTube videos. She does thrift flips and Dollar Tree and all kinds of creative things. She also has a booth where she sells her items. We have collaborated before. So when she asked me this time if I would be willing to do a collaboration with her, I said, of course I would. So if you like country girls and you like our accent, when you listen to her, you're gonna get a load of it because she is even more country than me, if you can believe that. So head on over to her channel when you're finished here. The next project is going to be Dollar Tree Hydrangea Sign. Okay, like I told y'all, all these are different, right? So, if you can't find thrift flips like I have, you can do this one, for sure. You're going to take one of those rounded signs from Dollar Tree. You can grab some flowers from Dollar Tree. And then these little, um, this says floral hydrangea. These are like wall stickers. And that's what they look like. I'm going to use some white paint. You can totally do this project, y'all. And look how easy this tag is going to come off. This rarely ever happens for me, but I was so excited. So we want to get that residue off. I'm going to use my sanding block to just remove that. And in the meantime, I'm going to do the entire sign because I want to make sure that there is no residue and no yucky nothing on there. And I want to make sure that the entire surface is the same. If you don't sand this MDF kind of stuff, sometimes it'll look like little hairs all over it. It's really weird. So I'm just going to sand it down and then I'm going to wipe it off and then paint it white. I'm gonna let it dry. I'm also gonna paint a little paint stick down there. Just gonna go over my edges because they're a little hairy. I don't like that. I'm gonna get that off there. Smooth it out. And then go across the, the uh, whole thing just to you know, scratch it up just a little. I need to extend this down a little bit because we're gonna be putting florals on it. So this paint stick is going to work perfectly. It's not the same size and it really doesn't matter. We're going to glue it down with some E6000 or some type of super glue that you have, whatever you have. Fix all adhesive from Dollar Tree works as well. And then um, after we get a couple of dots of that on, we'll put it on first because it takes longer to dry and then we'll quickly put on some dots of hot glue. That's going to grab and hold while the super glue sets up. I'm going to lay it down and butt it right up to that sign, push it together, and I'm just going to put some little weights on it, use whatever you have. I love my little insulators here because they're pretty, love that blue color. And I'm just going to use some hot glue and popsicle sticks to reinforce it on the back. You just break it where you need to. They're wood, so all you got to do is break it with your hands, go over that. and then weight it down. These boards do bow up, this artificial board, the MDF stuff. So, you know, you can bend it a little bit, put a little pressure on it and kind of get it to lay back flat. I'm going to take my beautiful thrifted flowers. Again, get yours at Dollar Tree, not a problem. And I am going to match these up with the colors that are in that, uh, the wall stickers. Okay, so you see the extra space that I got, that's an extra inch of space there on the bottom. And it's important that I extend the sign down because I wanna have plenty of room that you can see the stickers when we get those on. And these flowers are pretty big. They're not tiny flowers, hydrangeas are big. Um, they're pretty big. And so are the, I think those are dahlias maybe, that I'm gonna be adding on there too. So we wanna have plenty of space I'm going to start by just laying down some greenery, and this is the greenery pieces that I took off my flowers. If you don't have nice greenery on the Dollar Tree pieces, surely you have a box of scraps like most crafters do. Uh, I know I do. I know Trish and Kay do. I know that Kathy probably does too. We're going to dig in that box and we're going to pull out some big flowers or some big leaves. And we're going to put those on the bottom. This is going to give a sort of a base or a background. It's going to cover up the fact that we extended it, plus it's going to give us more room to put down the flowers. And I like that these are in a variety of different shades of green. That looks nice to me. And then we're going to start putting the flowers down. Now these are kind of going to be in a straight line, almost as if they were in a flower box. 
I'm going to put the hydrangea pieces on the outside first, these two. I do have another one. Then I'm going to add my dahlias in right next to it. And so far, this is symmetrical, pretty much. Then I'm going to take this hydrangea and kind of pull it in half. Put part of it up and part of it down so that it looks like two different pieces because I only had one. I'm going to add a lot of glue to hold that in place. And while that glue is still there, I'll add in a little scrap piece of hydrangea I had and then these blue flowers that I took out of another project. These blue flowers actually did come from Dollar Tree once upon a time and I've had them forever and I have crafted with them several times. So you want to make sure that everything is held down and in place. We didn't use any foam, so we got to lock it in place with glue. Now I'm going to grab that sign, and what I'm doing is trying to decide which pieces I would like to use in this project. And I know I want this huge hydrangea piece, so I'm just going to peel that off. And just be careful and take your time peeling it off. They, they can tear, but once you if you do tear it, because I did tear mine just a little bit in a corner, they will go back together and you won't even notice it if you don't rip it all the way off so i'm going to overlap it i just like the look of this plus you can extend it you can have more to use if you kind of overlap it if i would have put the whole thing in there then the whole sign would have been covered up so take your scissors and just trim it off and you can kind of see where i tore it there trim that piece off or you can turn it over, put it on a mat, and use your X-Acto knife, whatever's easy for you. But I knew I wanted to use this piece again. And I'm just gonna put this in, kind of line it up there with the edge so that it doesn't show, and have my greenery on there. Same process here, you're gonna flip it over, and then we won't reuse these pieces, so we're just gonna cut these off and drop them in the trash can. Or you can recycle whichever way you want to do it so far I like that look I have some more little pieces like uh, single pieces of leaves and flowers here so I'm just gonna add those in you don't even have to use a squeegee this clings down really well to that chalk paint that I used you can use acrylic though you don't have to use chalk paint then I'm gonna have this one kind of overlapping on the side and I will sand that down later and then I'll take this beautiful um, dahlia and we'll put her down in a minute. So this one I'm going to add right underneath here. And it's kind of pointing downward, opening downward. And then there are some single little hydrangea flowers in here. And I'll just put, you know, put some here, there on here. Whatever type of ribbon, or if you want to use jute, you could certainly do that. Um, put through that hole on the top so you can make a hanger. And I'm just going to do it with this ribbon. I think it's pretty and cottagey. It's kind of sheer. I believe I got it from Dollar Tree, but I may have thrifted and I'm not sure. But Dollar Tree does have a lot of ribbon, so you can choose what you like. And I'm just going to make a knot. I'm going to pull that knot to the back side. It will still slip through that hole, so instead of making another knot, I'm just going to add a dot of glue back there, and then I'm going to press that down into the glue, and the knot won't move back and forth, and we'll have a nice clean loop on the top. I'll take my sanding block now and go over the edges. This is going to make it look, I don't know, it looks a little, it just looks better to me. I'm so used to doing this on my projects. It just gives it a little something extra. You can see the difference from side to side. So I like the way it looks once we get it all sanded. It almost gives it an outline. So go all around the project. And I know some people, when they use stickers, um, they'll go over it with Mod Podge. If you wanted to put this outside, you certainly could do that. You could add some outdoor Mod Podge to it to make it stay in place. Or you could just add regular Mod Podge if you wanted to, if you, just to keep it in your house. Totally up to you what you want to do. Make sure that you fluff everything and everything's pretty. And here are the projects we've done. If you like budget-friendly DIYs that are unique, 
We can do thrift flips and Dollar Tree and recycle and whatever. Then I'd love to have you come over to my channel if you haven't already been here and subscribed and become part of our family. This is my favorite of the three, just because I like that natural look. But I wanted to give you also this one so that if you don't have the items that I have, you can certainly have something that you can do from this video. Remember to go and check Kathy out now. Thank you so much for stopping by, and I'll see you again soon. Bye!